Previously on Invention, we started a three-part series, How to Know When You're Ready to Move Up. We began with the dressage and took a look at the skills necessary for the three levels, beginner, novice, novice, and training. Then we looked at the show jumping and saw an example of a fence for each of these levels. Today, we're looking at the cross country. G'day, welcome to Invention TV and our final installment on how to know when you're ready to move up. Today we're discussing cross country and to get us started, we're here with a beginner novice fence. Now these jumps are not going to be any bigger than two foot seven and no wider than four feet at the base. Most of them will have this kind of simple construction, lots of logs and coops, and they're just designed to get the horse's confidence up and get him running and jumping. All right, let's head to a novice jump. Here we have an example of a novice cross country jump. Now these can have a maximum height of two foot 11. However, you might start seeing some brush on the jumps and the brush can actually be as high as three foot seven. And because the horses don't have to actually jump over the brush, it just appears bigger than it actually is. We can also have a base width of about six foot seven now. You're gonna start seeing some slightly bigger jumps and some slightly more difficult questions at the novice level. A little bit more schooling under the belts of the horses. All right, guys, let's head to a Shramo shout out. Today's shout out goes to Save a Horse Australia. Located in the Gold Coast hinterland in Queensland, Australia, this charity was started by Amanda Vella and they take in unwanted, neglected, and abused horses, rehabilitate them, and find them a forever home. Check them out here. This is a really special charity. Back to the action. Welcome back, guys. I'm here with an example of a training level table. We're working with a maximum fixed height of three foot three, three foot 11 with brush on top. But the biggest thing you'll probably notice is the change of width. These jumps can now be over five feet wide at the highest point and almost eight feet wide at the base. So much wider jumps. Before you think about going training level, you need to have the ability to gallop on down to a big table without pooping in your pants. Also, too, you're going to see the introduction of a lot more A, B, C combinations on your course. So your horse has to be bold, but also accurate. All right, let's go take a look at the banks. So you may not even see a drop on your beginner novice cross country course, but if you did, it could only be three foot three high, which is this size here. At novice, three foot 11 drops will be on the course. And at training, we take a big jump up and they can be four foot seven tall. It's important that you're not neglecting training going up and down banks because you really need to have the horse's confidence. Whether they're jumping onto ground or into water, they need to constantly be building that confidence. If you need help training banks, check out our bank episode here. Before we go to the ditches, let's go to an invention. Quick Q&A. Today's quick Q&A comes from Rosie Matthew in Taupo, New Zealand. And Rosie asks, do you have any tips for nervous riders? Well, Rosie, yes I do. The first one is work on having a more secure position. A lot of nervousness and anxiety in riders comes from being afraid of falling off if the horse misbehaves. So the more secure your position, the more at home you're gonna feel in the saddle. My next tip is, is ride as many different horses as possible. This will help get you used to adapting to different sized horses in different situations. Last but not least is ride as much as you possibly can. There's no substitute for hours in the saddle. Hope this helps. Remember, if you have a question you want answered on the show, Check us out on Facebook and post when we ask for questions. Back to the action. All right, guys, ditches. So this is a good example of like a beginner novice, novice ditch. It's not so much about the size, it's more about the horse's attitude. It's really important that we're training this question regularly because it's almost definitely gonna be on the course. Don't forget to train coming to a ditch from both uphill and downhill because it could change the way the horse reacts to it. At beginner novice, you're probably gonna see a ditch just all by itself. At novice, it may have a jump either before or after it. And at training level, it's almost definitely going to be part of a combination. So we've got to be training this really, really regularly, have the horses really bold and confident. All right, let's take a look at the speeds of cross country now. Last but not least is the speed cross country. I find this is one of the most neglected parts of people's training. 
If you're moving up a level for the first time, you need to be comfortable with the new speed. Now the maximum speeds for each level, beginner novice is 350 meters per minute, novice is 420 meters per minute, training 470. Now if you don't know how fast that is, here's a little tip. Get a measuring wheel and measure out one minute's worth of distance. So for example, at novice it would be 420 meters. Put a flag at each end and then wear a stopwatch, canter your horse through. At the end, take a look down. You'll probably either be slow or fast. And hopefully by using this method, you'll get a gauge on how fast the speed actually is. All right guys, that wraps up our three-part series, how to know when you're ready to move up. Hopefully you picked up some tips. If you need a bit more in-depth explanation of some of the elements on cross country, check out our banks, ditches, and water episode. Also too, if you can't get enough of invention, follow us on Twitter. See you next week.